On an uncomfortable topic, but let's talk about money for a minute because it is important. Will you have enough saved for retirement? According to the Federal Reserve, one in four American adults has nothing saved for retirement, not a single dollar. Are you one of them? Well, in fact, only one out of every three adults say they're on track financially for retirement. Those who don't save enough will absolutely need Social Security. Indeed, nearly all American retirees receive Social Security income. But here's the rub. Listen up, us, especially if you want to be one. The Social Security Trust Fund, where most Americans get their Social Security dollars, is set to run out of money in just 12 years. We are essentially emptying the piggy bank faster than we're filling it up. In fact, according to a government report, due to the economic impacts of COVID, also the trust fund will run out of money a year earlier than previously forecast. The Treasury Department putting it this way, the finances have been significantly affected by the pandemic and recession of 2020. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, meantime, promising, however, to safeguard the program. But what we've heard for years, in fact, is just that. Decades. Will Social Security actually be around for you? Let's ask Winnie Sun, managing partner at Sun Group Wealth Partners, and Mitch Rochelle of Macro Trends Advisors. Uh, thanks to both of you. Mitch, let's start with you. Are, are there people watching right now who will never see a Social Security check? I don't know how young your demographic is, Joe, but I think uh, that there should, could be some. Um, I think likely what will happen is a sort of recasting of Social Security, if this could ever get through Congress, where those folks who were probably baby boomers and maybe Gen X that are uh, vested or partially vested in Social Security benefits may be fine, but the, the millennials and Gen Z, like my kids' generation, may pay into something and never get anything in return. That's really the only way to fix something that literally runs out of money in 11 or 12 years. Winnie, I'm sure people are watching this who say, man, I wish I could. I'm trying, right? Maybe they don't have a 401k. They're paying rent. Maybe they're paying for kids' college. They can't save. What would you say to them? Well, I would say there's really two choices you have here, Joe. I mean, you either have to bring in more income or you have to spend less money. So we're at the situation where the government's dollars, the Social Security that we were funding all these years with our paychecks may not be there for us. So we're going to have to come up with a plan B and maybe in a plan C right now. But this is the time. This is the time to think about what our future is going to look like. So it's the sooner the better. Yeah. I mean, it's 12 years away and not many people are talking about it. Mitch, the Treasury Secretary says it'll be safeguarded. What are some of the possible fixes and changes you see coming? Maybe we don't get it till later. Maybe we don't get as much. I, I think uh, later is one thing. You know, the normal retirement age that's baked into Social Security probably isn't uh, as modern as it could be. And maybe we could defer when people start to receive benefits and then perhaps not as much. But if you think about it, the Social Security program is a defined benefit plan, sort of a traditional um, pension plan. And many corporations, if you look to what the private sector has done, has gotten away from defined benefit plans more to the 401ks, which are right. defined contribution plans. So maybe one of the other fixes is have, uh, you know, taxpayers sort of put money aside for themselves and give them more incentives, not less, to save for retirement. Winnie, I'm worried about the people we mentioned there who have saved nothing. And I guess I'm wondering what happens when all these people who have nothing and are relying on Social Security get to that point in retirement? What do we do? Well, we got a big problem at that point. I mean, I think what Mitch said is uh, makes a lot of sense. Uh, we got to get to a point where people start to take more responsibility for their retirement. Um, yes, it would be great if more people continue to, to start working and maybe gen, the millennials and Gen Zers, you know, continue to pay into Social Security. But we can see already it's not just Social Security. We're talking Medicare, Medi-Cal as well, of what what is this going to look like for the future? Um, so yeah, I think there's a lot of things in play, but I think what we need to do is maybe relook at how we save for retirement mm -hmm. and it's going to be scary if we have to factor out social security for such a large population no doubt Winnie, you mentioned uh, getting people back to work and mitch will shift to you on this and we'll get you after that Winnie. but talking about people getting back to work the thought was that that we were maybe incentivizing people not to work so there were states that pulled their enhanced unemployment early and it turned out in the end, the numbers were pretty much the same as the states that didn't and continued with that money. How do we get people, Mitch, back to work? 
I think one of the things that's happening, Joe, is you have to sort of look at big business versus small business. And what's happening is big businesses are paying up for employees and creating in financial incentives to get people back to work. The problem is a third of our workforce are small businesses, and they really can't afford to pay up necessarily and stay in business themselves. So I think somehow we need incentives for businesses to hire people as opposed to incentives for workers to potentially not go to work. And I don't see a lot of pro-business policies coming out of the administration, but we really need to fix this problem at the small business level first. Well, speaking of small businesses, Winnie, I guess a, a McDonald's franchisee in an article that caught our attention is now looking to hire 14-year-olds. What does that tell you? It tells us that there's a big problem, that they can't hire people. It's not just about enhanced unemployment benefits. It's the greater problem here that we're seeing is people are still very concerned about Delta, about the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And until that's behind us, you're going to see continue to see uh, businesses not thrive because it's one thing, you know, everyone's sending their, their kids back to school. So we thought, well, then parents could go back to work. But the, the truth is a lot of people aren't in a hurry to get back to work because they don't feel safe enough to do mm -hmm. so. So we're thinking, we even saw news out of Google today. Sundar Pakai said, you know, we're going to keep really flexible and you don't have to come back into the office probably until 2022. So when you're hearing that and you're looking at your availability, you know, even substitute teachers right now, they're not willing to go back into the workforce yet. So these are such bigger problems that I don't think money can solve in the, in the short future. The other problem, Mitch, is prices are going up. Uh, I mean, you talk about gas up roughly 50 percent. Uh, you can see the price of eggs up, milk up. Uh, even the White House, Mitch, is, is conceding this now, saying that prices are, they're anticipating will go higher in the fourth quarter. So we have Social Security running out. People aren't working. Prices are going up. There has to be a silver lining in this economy, right, Mitch? Uh, listen, the silver lining is uh, that the economy is continuing to expand and GDP, gross domestic product, is booming and will probably continue to boom. What I do worry about on inflation is if the labor market continues to be tight, we could find ourselves in a very vicious cycle where wages keep going up because companies have to pay more to get workers and then because they're paying more then they have to raise prices. We have a service-based economy which is on the backs of people, which means if you have to pay more for those people, then you have to pass those prices prices along to the consumer. So uh, the silver lining is there is growth and the silver lining is there's 9 million open jobs out there right. if people to Winnie's point just feel safe enough to get back to work. Leave us on a high note Winnie. Well, I think there's some silver linings in there. We're definitely seeing, you know, Americans reassess where their budgets are. I'm doing like a record numbers of client calls these days and people are learning to save more and like live within their means. So who knows, maybe future retirement means that we have a better sense of how much money we need for the future and we make adjustments. And when the pandemic is behind us, I think things will start to improve more quickly than we anticipated too. So I think that's a big silver lining there. Pay yourself first. Isn't that what they say? I think that's, uh, exactly. yeah. All right. Hey, Winnie Son of Sun Group Wealth Partners and Mitch Rochelle, founding partner of Macro Trends Advisors. Good to have you both. Take care. Thank you for having us. See you soon, Joe. All right.